This is not my usual video, so please bear with me. Mini games have always been a big part of old school RuneScape since its inception. One of the examples of a thriving minigame in this day and age is the Last Man Standing PvP minigame, which is inspired by battle royales such as Fortnite, PUBG, and Call of Duty Warzone. A minigame where 25 people get put into a game, start with the basic gear, fight each other, get upgrades, and there is only one winner at the end. Another example of a minigame that is pretty active these days is the Soul Wars minigame, which is a mix of both PvP and PvE in the same minigame. But there are minigames that are still active that is definitely not PvP-centric, for example the Guardians of the Rift, which is a minigame where you train runecrafting, and the only purpose is really to train runecrafting through a more fun method of doing it than just running back and forth to an altar. But there is one type of minigame that I am surprised and honestly kind of shocked that is not in the game and has not really been talked much about at all, and that is a roguelike minigame. So what we're going to be doing in this video is I have an idea for a minigame that is just a rough draft, and if this is something you guys would really love to see in the game, or have criticism about this idea itself, I would love to see it in the comments, but let's get into my idea of how a roguelike could look like in Old School RuneScape. So usually how roguelikes work is that they start off real easy. So in the beginning you only maybe fight one or two monsters or get a very small challenge to complete. And after that you get an upgrade. And this upgrade you usually get to choose between different options. For example, three different options that give you a small or big power increase. Sometimes you get bigger upgrades, sometimes smaller. So for this video I'm going to be using the fight caves as an example of a fighting area and you're going to be starting off very simple to begin with. For example, you fight two bats as the first wave. After that, there is going to be a power spawning in the middle of the room. You click this power and this is what comes up. You get three options of upgrades that you can choose one of. These are permanent upgrades for the entire run that you are currently on. But if you do fail the run, these are not coming with you for the run afterwards. The first one could for example be, you gain 10 plus max hit points for the remaining of the run, making you able to get 109 maximum HP. This could stack up, and eventually, if you go far enough in the future, you might even have 200 or 300 max HP. The second upgrade could for example be an Ice Barrage upgrade, making it hit up to 10 enemies with one cast instead of 9, this obviously also stacking up just like the HP one. And the last one, your special attacks now require 5% less special gauge per cast, making for example, our Godsword God Sword use 45 spec instead of 50, or a DDS spec require only 20 instead of 25. Now these are only some examples of upgrades I thought of, you could obviously have hundreds of different upgrades and I think a lot of inspiration to these upgrades could come from the relics in the past leagues. For example, your attack speed of magic or ranged might be one tick faster or you just get a straight up damage reduction. These are also potential upgrades that could be put into the game for this minigame. Now another thing that these roguelike minigames usually have in common is that they have power progression outside of the minigame for future runs that you want to do. So even though you do lose all these powers if you do fail the run, you do get some currency depending on how far you got and maybe also during the uh, upgrade phase you can sometimes get for example 50 extra currency instead of taking a power up. So what I think would be an excellent way of dealing with this issue for RuneScape specifically is that you would start off with gear like this, the first runs that you do. And this would be the case for even if you were level 3 because this could be an instanced minigame that changes all your stats to 99 when you enter just like Last Man Standing. And this is the gear that you can only use in this minigame. But when you leave the minigame, depending on how well you did, you get a currency that allows you to go into a shop that then upgrades these items to the next time when you enter. 
So let's say that you start off with a Staff of Air. And from your first game, you actually got enough points to get the Iban Staff upgrade for 350 coins. You buy this and the next time you enter the minigame, you will have an Iban Staff instead of the Staff of Air. And this could be done for every single item slot there is. You could start off with a Ring of Recoil and end up with a Light Bearer or an Imbued Berserker Ring if you spend enough points. So the first time that you enter, you are going to be very weak and all of these bonus damage upgrades that you get during the run is not going to be as impactful as in the future when you've gained all these upgrades and you can go in with a Twisted Bow, a Kodai Wand, Full Ancestral and all of the best gear in the game. Now that we have basically the gearing, the progression, the upgrades out of the way, I do quickly want to talk about how I would personally love to see them actually do the fights in the minigame. So as I said in the beginning, I would love you to start against some very minor enemies. For example, you could even start off fighting a couple of goblins or something like that. And then after that, they could upgrade it slowly to bigger enemies. Maybe you fight a couple of Necreals, you fight maybe a couple of superior creatures at the same time in multi-combat. And eventually, maybe every 10th wave or every 20 wave, you will fight a boss. Now, just like the monsters in the minigame, they start off easy and progressively get harder and more difficult and more of them at the same time. But I do think that bosses have a bit of a leeway because they are usually placed slightly later on in the run. I think there should be at least one boss every 10 or 20 waves that you do. But after 10 waves you should have 10 upgrades or 20 waves you should have 20 upgrades. And that kind of allows you to actually make the bosses at least a bit more interesting and difficult. Even in the early levels of the run. I would of course love them to make unique bosses for this specific minigame, but I do realize making like 10 unique bosses with unique mechanics for just one minigame would be unreasonable. So they can definitely reuse some of the models that they already have in the game and just change up some of the mechanics of the fights, making them fit more for a roguelike type. One quick example of what this would look like is for example, reuse Arachnus, it spawns more minions than usual, roots in place just like it does in the normal fight, but now also can shoot spider web on the ground. If you walk into it, you get debuffed and also you fall on the ground, get stunned for a few seconds. And that is about it. Of course, if Jagex were to make a minigame like this for RuneScape, it would be 100% up to them to evaluate how long it would take to actually make unique bosses for every single encounter, and if it actually would be worth it. If it would be worth it, that would obviously be really cool for a minigame like this, but I do think that even having reskinned bosses with maybe a one or two different mechanics than usual would also be pretty acceptable. Now that is my rough draft of how a roguelike could look like in old school runescape. Obviously this could probably be made a lot better by the Jagex team themselves. Now I do want to talk about two more things before I end this video. And we're going to go through these pretty quickly, hopefully at least. So the first thing is that I think Jagex already took some inspiration from roguelike games in the Tombs of Amasket. Obviously on a very small level, but I do think that the helpful spirit giving you smelling salts and ambrosia, which is extremely overpowered items in old school runescape, but it's completely fine because they are enclosed to only the tombs of a mascot. This is obviously kind of the essence of roguelikes. You get really, really overpowered, just like in the leagues, but it's enclosed to only that minigame. Now, what did bringing Smelling Salt and Ambrosia to TOA actually do to players? Well, a lot of them started the discussion of, can we have this in the game and it be completely fine? And I think most people came to the conclusion that would be a bit too overpowered. But even though those cases were a bit too overpowered, I do think if they want, they could put in some effects in the roguelike minigame that could be, for example, that your shots ricochet. So when you hit an enemy, it then splits into the other enemies as well, but for maybe 10% of the damage done to the main target. Which is actually kind of what they're already doing with the Bloodletter bow that's going to be released pretty soon. Because the power spike in the minigame is already so absurd, they can put in small things as powers that they think they could actually maybe even put on weapons or gear or effects in the future in the actual main game. Giving Jagex a bit of leeway and a free area to basically try whatever ideas that they have and it'd be completely fine. 
Now the last mention I want to do is to the Fight Kiln in RuneScape 3, which has a very basic version of a roguelike effect in it. The Fight Kiln is basically a pretty easy version of the Inferno, but every two waves that you do out of the 37 potential ones, you get a crystal that spawns. There is ones that give you 30 seconds of invulnerability, there is one that restores your prayer and life hit points. There's combat ones that boost your magic ranged and melee by 50%, giving you a max of like 148 strength or something ridiculous. And then there is a constitution gem that gives you 50% higher max HP, which is like the power I was talking about before, giving you higher max HP. And that is actually it for all of the different powers. So that is very bare bones, only six potential upgrades. And in this roguelike minigame, I would love to see like 50 or 100 at least. But that is going to do it for this video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. And at least some of the ideas that I came up with might be good. And actually considered to be in the game in the future. I really do believe in roguelikes. I think they are amazing replayable content. And having a gear progression outside of the minigame. That then actually starts your next runs even more powerful. And allowing you to go even further would be a super cool system to play with. It goes without saying, I would love to hear your feedback in the comments, and like the video if you liked it, subscribe for all that good stuff, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.